If you plead guilty, there is no appeal process at all. Well, I got to be honest. This is the worst story that I could share at the right time. It's almost 12 o'clock as I begin this, and I've been fasting for 16 hours a day. I've been doing that for almost a week now, and man, that shit gets real when you get close to that 16-hour mark. So why don't we go ahead and talk about a story involving food? Folks, it was a... Uh, a week ago or so, I shared this story on Kicking the Bobo, the live stream that we do here on After Prison Show, but there's been more developments to this, and I really want to get into this. And also, this this story has been all over the place, even making it as far as the breakfast club. But the story involves a woman who stole $1.5 million worth of chicken wings in Chicago, and she got sentenced to nine years in prison. For this. Folks, let me go ahead and introduce you to this woman, right? Chia. Her name is Verna Liddell. And this is the woman who, who did this crazy heist right here. This sounds like a GTA heist, right? Hey, we're going to go steal $1.5 million worth of chicken wings. What do you do with $1.5 million worth of chicken wings? I just want to begin this by asking, do you do you sell them? Do you open up a little bootlega spot? Do you bootlega? Are you selling food plates on Facebook Marketplace? Are you undercutting Applebee's supply chain? Hey, yo. Hey, hey, y'all need some of them chicken wings. This $1.5 million worth of chicken wings that this woman stole was said to have been about 11,000 cases of chicken wings. My God, that is a lifetime supply of chicken wings. We are preparing for the end of days with that amount of chicken wings. If the world were to end, this woman would have a stockpile that could last her the rest of her, her life. And she looks a little older in this picture as well, too, so... You know, there's that. An attorney for Verna Liddell told People Magazine, shit, this joint made it to people as well. The chicken wings were intended for underprivileged children receiving free lunches during the pandemic shutdown. What? That's not the information that I read uh, initially when I shared this story. And in fact, when they said that this woman bought 11,000 cases of chicken wings valued at over $1.5 million, they said the reason that they got hip to this, the cat came out the bag, is because they wasn't even putting chicken wings with the bone in them on the lunch trays. Is it lunch trays? It sounds like prison right there. You know, in the lunch meals for kids doing at-home schooling during the pandemic. So your attorney's lying, it seems like. Or maybe there's some bad information. You know, when I was going to school, we never got no chicken wings. Certainly not no chicken wings with the chicken on the bone. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to throw a flag on the play right there and say uh, you're full of shit. Now, also, and I'm not sure if this story is going to share it or not, but somebody had told me that there was like an NFL player who was going to pay for this. I, I don't remember where I heard that. Like somebody was stepping in to try to help out in this situation. Maybe this story is going to share more on that. But what's interesting that I didn't know when I first shared this story was that this $1.5 million worth of chicken wings here was intended to fund her gambling addiction. Oh, shit. That's something you don't hear about every day. Oftentimes, people steal to, to feed a drug addiction. And I'm not going to say that it doesn't happen, but I can say pretty certainly, I've never heard of anybody stealing to fund a gambling addiction. What was you gambling on? A lawyer representing Verna Liddell, the former Illinois school cafeteria consultant. This woman worked in the school cafeteria. You never know. You know, it takes all kinds. It takes a village. <laughs> Wrong analogy. But, uh, you know, who would have ever thought an innocent looking, lowly old woman like this could be involved in such a mastermind, MacGyver-like, tactical operation? Stealing some chicken wings valued at over a million dollars. They said that she was in charge of like ordering the food. So she was ordering all of these cases of chicken wings. Again, mind you, 11,000 cases at that. Where was she getting these shipped to? Was she getting them shipped to the school and then she was just carrying these out to her car, putting these in her trunk? 11,000 cases. That's like an 18 wheeler full. At least. Maybe more. Could you get 11,000 cases of chicken wings in a 48-foot trailer? Not exactly sure. 
A lawyer representing Verna Liddell, the former Illinois school cafeteria consultant who was sentenced to nine years in prison. Man, they smoked her boots for this shit. Why? Why she get so much damn time? How she didn't get probation? Did she have a criminal record? I mean, I understand we're talking about $1.5 million. I understand we're talking about a lot of money here, but damn, nine years just sounds extreme. I've heard of people getting less time for, you know, similar amounts of money, I believe, after admitting to stealing $1.5 million worth of chicken wings from a local district, she says she committed the theft to fund her gambling addiction. Crazy, you know, and to think, hey, look, you go into the courtroom, woe was me, you throw yourself at the mercy of the judge. Look, hey, I'm an addict. Oh, shit. Well, that changes everything. Okay, that's actually understandable why you would do something like this. You're working in a school around children, so, you know, addiction there is definitely a little on the taboo side. But, you know, what kind of narcotics are you are you addicted to? Gambling. Gambling is your addiction, shit woman. Nine years. Next case. Yeah, I, I feel like a gambling addiction just wouldn't get the, the, the sympathy that a heroin one might. Heroin? Oh, gosh, damn. Damn, heroin for real? Oh, you addicted to the dog food? To that black tar stuff? To that H? What else they be calling heroin? Smack? Oh, shit. Oh, damn, I do feel bad. You know, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody who might be suffering from an addiction problem, but I'm just saying... A gambling addiction hits a little different than a drug one does. She's just a little sweetheart that got a gambling problem, her attorney Patrick O'Brien told People Magazine. She feels beyond terrible about this. You feel bad because you got caught. Let's just call it for what it is. Because had you not got caught, would you still be doing this? How many more pallet loads of chicken wings would you have stolen by this particular point? I hate to be so brazzers, I mean brazen, but it's a very valid question to think about, right? A very valid point to think about. You know, you feel bad about something when you're caught, right? And if you don't get caught, would you ever feel bad? Would you ever quit? If you were, if you never were going to get caught, would you ever quit? Maybe something drastic would happen that would force change, right? This is totally uncharacteristic of her. It was the disease taking over. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I know we ain't talking about. I mean, what what are we saying here? The disease? What disease? Oh, you got the gambling? That's like syphilis, right? Cancer? It was the disease taking. Addiction is a disease. I've heard it referred to as that. But is a gambling addiction a disease? I I would beg to differ there, personally. On August 9th, the 68-year-old woman pled guilty to one count of felony theft of more than $1 million and was sentenced to nine years in prison. Damn. Uh, Liddell was working as a cafeteria consultant for the Illinois School District at the time of the theft, which occurred between July 2020 and February of 2022, just a mere two years. The lawyer says the chicken wings were intended for underprivileged children receiving free lunches during the pandemic shutdown. But again, I had read in another story that they weren't getting chicken on the bone. I've never been anywhere in a school, you know, anywhere where you were getting chicken wings. You might get boneless chicken wings, but the chicken wings on the bone, again, is why this cat came out of the bag from what I had read. Liddell made false orders of chicken wings, which she then resold. Gosh almighty, man. Could you imagine if you were documenting this like this was a documentary? Forget that. They need to remake the movie Blow. The scene where George Young gets rid of all the kilos and then they're like, he gets the opportunity to go meet Pablo Escobar. So this is the man. So this is the man who takes 33 kilos and makes them disappear in in, in one day. Uh, well, you know, really it was 48 hours, but who's counting? Uh, my accents there were just for <laughs> Fugazi, to say the least. Yeah, man, if they could have been following her around with a camera to see how she was reselling these, like bagging them up in little... I got three for five. Three for five is actually pretty expensive for some chicken wings. 
Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to this part of the story because, again, this is new. I, I didn't hear about this. Somebody told me about this. NFL star Chris Jones offers to pay for $1.5 million worth of stolen chicken wings after cafeteria worker sentenced. How awesome of a person is this right here uh, offering to do this saying my fate is in God's hands Verna Liddell told her lawyer shortly before the Kansas City Chiefs defensive tackle tweeted his offer so it's crazy she says my fate is in God's hands she said this shortly before the defensive tackle tweeted his offer. I mean, this was a this was a miracle that was happening right here. He stepped in to pay for this when the Chicago defense lawyer saw reports that an NFL star wanted to put down over one million dollars of his own money to get a local cafeteria worker out of prison. He thought it was a hoax, but then he got a call from someone he said represents Chris Jones, confirming the tweet in which he promised, "I'll pay for the wings that she stole to get her free." And right here it says, People Magazine reached out to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office for more information, but they did not respond in time for the publication. Damn, is it too little too late? What if he does pay for this? Would they go ahead and, you know, let her out of prison? I I don't necessarily know how that's going to work. You know, the court proceeding has already taken place. She's already been found guilty and sentenced. You know, she could get a reconsideration. But here's the other thing. In the state of Virginia, if you take a plea deal, if you plead guilty, there is no appeal process at all. The only time you can get appeal in Virginia is if you go to trial and you lose, which in my particular case, when I got seven years, seven and a half years for drugs and a gun, that's why I didn't take a plea deal because they weren't coming at me with any amount of time at all. I remember my lawyer said, yeah, they're going to drop the driving on a suspended charge was the only charge that they were willing to drop. And then there's no cap on the time. And my lawyer said, yeah, I even went at them with like a straight 10 years and they said that they didn't want to do that. And I'm like, damn, man, how much time are these people trying to give me? So, of course, I took it to trial. I lost. I went to sentencing, wrote me a little inauguration speech. Hey, I'm sorry. I got caught. I was sorry. You know, mercifully, I ended up with seven and a half years, which was still higher than my guidelines because the high end of my guidelines was only five years, eight months. But because I fell under Project Exile, I couldn't get anything less than seven years. And the the prosecutor actually said all of that in the courtroom. So as they're saying this, this is a unique case, Your Honor. His high end on his guidelines is five years, eight months. But because he's Project Exile, he can't get anything less than seven years. I'm like, oh, shit. Hey, I might be okay in this. And I did come out okay. I got seven years. But damn, man, I feel like what I did was even worse than what this lady did, even though we're talking about way more money here. And I feel like in Verna Liddell's case, she took a plea deal. Her lawyer probably told her it was in her best interest to take the plea deal. But was there an amount of time attached to that plea deal? Hey, look, if you go ahead and plead guilty, you know, they'll probably have a little more leniency on you. Did she go into this knowing you're pleading guilty and you're going to take nine years? They don't mention anything about that. But again, I need to reiterate this. In the state of Virginia, there's no appeal process if you plead guilty. Now, a reconsideration, a time modification, like there's a lot of different things that they they call getting back into the courtroom. I don't know if those are eligible to you by taking a plea deal. I don't know if having a viral story in an NFL star getting involved in this is going to, you know, you know, make something shake here, but I, I believe that it probably will. So look, I'm going to go ahead and give you my jailhouse lawyer take on this particular story. Yes, this woman did get her boots smoked. You've got an NFL star ready to step in and pay for what she did. We're talking about a 68-year-old woman with a gambling problem here. I truly feel like she ain't about to do these nine years. I would hope. I mean, again, does she even got a criminal record? Probably not. And y'all still smoked her like that? Man, shit, it's 2024, man. You better... 
better recognize y'all better start playing fair. I hope she gets out. That's just my two cents. And uh, I think that she probably has a good chance of doing so. Hey, look, that's it. I hope this was a video you guys enjoyed. If it was, please leave a like and a comment on this, letting me know exactly what you thought about this story. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!